Passenger pigeons could not successfully coexist with the needs of farmers or hunters, so they were killed off aimlessly. The death of the last passenger pigeon roused the public's interest for the need for more, better enforced conservation laws, making this a turning point in history. On September 1st, 1914, the last passenger pigeon died at the Cincinnati Zoo. The passenger pigeon, named Martha, died at the age of 29 when she fell off her perch due to old age. The hope to rehabilitate the ailing numbers of passenger pigeons was shattered when the search for a mate for Martha proved unsuccessful, even when the Cincinnati Zoo offered $1,000. Martha, who had been known around the country as the last of her kind, was visited by masses of people who flocked to Cincinnati to see her. Martha was so beloved by the nation and was such an important part of American history that she was frozen in a 300-pound block of ice and shipped from Cincinnati to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., where she was temporarily placed on display in the bird hall. Although Martha is no longer on display, but is currently stored in the archives at the Smithsonian, she had a memorial dedicated in her honor at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1977. The memorial was a preserved and renovated version of the bird aviary that Martha had died in. The bird aviary would have been destroyed so that the Cincinnati Zoo could make room for their new primate exhibit, if not for the sale of the painting by the 20th century Audubon, John A. Ruthven. As the population of the passenger pigeon began declining rapidly, Plants, such as the American beech tree and the sand cherry, decreased in their numbers as well. Whenever you leave an ecological gap, it has um, consequences that we could never foresee or understand. These consequences that followed the extinction of the passenger pigeon led to two very important conservation laws, the Endangered Species Act of 1973 and the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969, which were both signed by the then current president, Richard Nixon. The Endangered Species Act was created to conserve the species that are endangered or threatened, and the National Environmental Policy Act was created to require all federal agencies to incorporate environmental values into their processes. These two acts have already saved many species from the same fate of the passenger pigeon. I mean, when I was a, a your age, they were talking about the inevitable extinction of the peregrine falcon. Today, they're not even on the endangered list. Passenger pigeons were once the most populous bird in North America. John James Audubon wrote, the pigeons were passing in undiminished numbers and continued to do so for three days in succession. When the Europeans created agricultural farmsteads in the United States, the passenger pigeon's population flourished because they were able to feed off the crops that the farmers had sown. Just one flock of passenger pigeons could devour an entire field of crops, leaving the farmers with nothing to sell or eat from the harvest. These farmers resorted to hunting the passenger pigeon for food and personal use only. Only when the hunting of the passenger pigeon became an industry was there a great decline in the numbers of the passenger pigeon. The use of the railroad by the passenger pigeon industry made it easier for the hunters to transport the meat to other cities quickly, which made for higher demand of the passenger pigeon. Hunters were able to hunt hundreds even thousands of passenger pigeons in a single day. But at the time, realizing this was the early 1900s, people didn't really understand perhaps the consequences of their actions. And the result of that is that the passenger pigeon 
numbers were reduced to a critical point. And by 1914, the last individual, Martha, died here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Although an 1897 bill had been introduced in Michigan, proposing a 10-year closed season on the hunting of the passenger pigeon, it was already too late because the passenger pigeon, who relied on large numbers to reproduce, had no interest to mate in a small flock. Therefore, the passenger pigeon population could not sustain their once numerous numbers. The idea is that once they got hunted down to a certain level, they weren't hunted to extinction, but they got hunted down to a certain level, and there was too few of them to form these big breeding uh, roosts, and, and they just quit breeding. The people of the 19th century did not think twice when they killed a passenger pigeon, as evidenced by the many shooting matches arranged to shoot passenger pigeons for sport. Aldo Leopold, an environmentalist who lived during the time of the extinction of the passenger pigeon, commented, the sportsman who shot the last pigeon thought only of his prowess. The sailor who clubbed the last hawk thought of nothing at all. The death of the last passenger pigeon will never be forgotten. The memorial dedicated to Martha is located at the Cincinnati Zoo, where she lived and died, a reminder that the extinction of the passenger pigeon was due to our priority of industry over everything else. Leopold wrote, the priority of industry has become dogma. People learned that they could have a real consequence on wildlife. Yeah. And that would lead to more conservation efforts. Decades after the death of Martha, Crew was established at the Cincinnati Zoo. Crew, a research facility created for the practice of conserving endangered species of plants and animals from its beginning in 1981 to the present, is renowned for its groundbreaking procedures that have been used by zoos around the world. Crew is our Center for Research for Endangered Wildlife and we do animals as well as plants. Sometimes people think that the only thing that you really need to worry about is the animals. And of course that's not the case because if we don't have the plants, we don't have the animals. This is our, the crew's cryobiobank. What we have down here in these tanks is we have 75 species of animals and 125 um, samples of plants. Most of the procedures that are going on in here are domestic cats because we are then able to use the research that we apply on the domestics to applications for wild species. Through their work, Crew has inspired many people around the world to promote conservation. And since the extinction of the passenger pigeon, the importance of conservation has skyrocketed. I think the important takeaway in all of this is that we as people do dominate the planet. Animals and plants survive essentially with our permission these days. In the April 2013 edition of National Geographic, Reviving Extinct Species, the new technology that could be used to resurrect extinct species was revealed in the well-detailed, well-illustrated article, Bringing Them Back to Life. One of the animals that has the potential to be brought back to life is the passenger pigeon. The recipe for resurrection of the passenger pigeon is explained in a chart in the National Geographic article. Scientists would begin with still intact DNA fragments of passenger pigeon museum specimens and synthesize mutations that identify the passenger pigeon. A rock pigeon's stem cell would be emptied of its own DNA and replaced with the newly created passenger pigeon DNA. Rock pigeons are closely related to passenger pigeons. These stem cells would need to be converted into germ cells, future eggs and sperm, and inserted into rock pigeon eggs. When this egg hatches, it will be a rock pigeon carrying passenger pigeon genes. 
when a male and female rock pigeon that had been genetically altered mate, a bird that looks like the passenger pigeon will be born. Questions have challenged this recipe, as well as the benefits of de-extinction. Therefore, no further steps have been taken to test this recipe for resurrection. Many scientists interviewed in National Geographic argue that bringing back an extinct species, such as the passenger pigeon, could destroy a now extant species, such as the rock pigeon, by bringing to the world unfamiliar diseases and new competition for food and shelter. The recipe for resurrection has not been proven to be successful and will not be tested until precautionary measures have been taken to ensure the safety of a living species. Passenger pigeons could not successfully coexist with the needs of farmers or hunters, so they were killed off aimlessly. The death of the last passenger pigeon roused the public's interest for the need for more better enforced conservation laws, making this a turning point in history.